hello there and welcome to this video in this video what we're gonna do is we are going to use some more components in the scorecards and we'll see some more things like centering a column drawing and reducing the spacing and things like that all right let's get started now so this is the same scorecard which we've been working with and what we're gonna do now is we are going to change this column which is the column number four and as you can see it's gross margin for the year and let's try and use a trend line chart okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna click here and then we're gonna go to column number four which is right about here and as you can see the chart here is called as a trend chart column okay so all you had to do in this case is change the chart to trend line and that should be enough because the data is already selected for the specific task and you can always verify the data there you go so you can see it here but this is basically the year for the gross margin okay so maybe what you want to see is the type of cell which is the multiple cell value so what you have to do is first you have to select the gross margin column and then you have to select the number of years basically all the different rows you have for the year all right so what we're going to do now is we are going to test it so we're going to say save okay and then let's run this and now you're going to see a trend line chart so as you can see here this is a trending line so for example 9641 was the revenue in the 2014 and then 2015 it dipped and it came back to 21958 in 2016 so that is how this data is split so how do you verify well of course the same kind of task so you go to edit initial view you have to choose the gross margin here and as you can see here it starts with 9641 and then it goes all the way to 21958 okay all right pretty good pretty good all right now what we're going to do is we are going to first of all study this specific component here which is called as a comparison bar okay so delta bar perhaps so in this column what we're doing is we are studying the gross margin versus revenue right so this is pretty interesting first of all to understand how you are picking the values so the values are coming from two different columns so you can also do that obviously so if I pull up the selected data cell here you will see that one value is coming from gross margin so there you go so result of the gross margin across the multiple years we have here and if I can go back to the benchmark value you will see that that is coming from the revenue side okay so basically a completely different column so this is not just across different years this is a completely different column so there you go so this is revenue so it was gross margin and revenue all right now what it's showing is how much gross margin did you make on the revenue you sold so pretty nice you can use this for this kind of a situation where you have to see the delta so this is called the delta so basically here you have the gross margin and this is your actual revenue so this is how much is going in between all right so a very important measure for the business folks they need to understand this very clearly so there you go so this is called the delta bar chart obviously you can scroll down and things like that so you can scroll down to see all the values all right all right now you can also use some other charts like for example you have bullet chart okay so i can take you to the bullet chart here so first of all let's just see what the bullet chart looks like so just basically a bar with different sections in the bar all right so there you go so this is how a bullet chart looks like and this will make more sense if you bring in a value in between so for example if i bring a threshold for example let's say here and i call it let's say 10000 now 
you will see that this will make more sense. But there you go. So the threshold is right about here. Okay. So you can see these two small pug marks. So the 10,000 is right about here. Okay. So you can see now it makes a little bit more sense and, and the value is also actually extending. So much better, much better. So there are many more functionalities which you can introduce here. You can also have many more thresholds if you like. There are many more thresholds you can introduce. So critical value, error value, and this is the scale and so many other features you have here. Now let's come to this first column here. Okay, let's try to reduce the column size. We don't need such a big 240 is tremendously big. Make it 100. Okay. It's about that column size and definitely I don't like the color of this cell. So you can change it. Okay. Generally, you want a light grayish kind of a thing or these days all the dashboards are becoming darker in color. So that way you can change it to a darker color as well if you like. Here it is left alignment. You can make it center. Okay, that's very important. And they can do the same with column number two. Column number two is also let's say white right now. And you can change it to light gray right about here. Okay. And this is also left. And make it center. So we said we were going to do that. And we have done it all right very nice so let's try and run this again all right so there you go much better and of course you can make this bold and things like that you can change the color of the text itself and so on and many other things so this is a very very rough looking chart uh, or a dashboard perhaps obviously this is nowhere close to be finished in terms of the look and feel of course the data is there it makes sense the look and feel you have to go a long way <coughs> in making the data look very nice and clean and you can use a lot of things to make it appealing all right so much for it so much for it and the last thing is we are going to make this pretty big okay so you can make this huge so now actually you will kind of get the entire picture of how the user might see in you know, a like a big huge desktop with a big browser or perhaps in an iPad and things like that. Obviously these are dynamically scaled to the rendering device. So if you use a mobile template and there are many other templates so they will automatically resize based on the rendering device. There you go. Much better. It looks much better. So this needs to be centered real nice. Let's go and center this third one, third column, column number three, which has not been centered for a while actually. Okay, there you go. You can also use a CSS class. That's perhaps the most easiest way to do this is you first design a template. Obviously, which you're going to do anyways is each report will have a CSS template pre-decided based on enterprise templates. And you're just going to use that uh, CSS class. So things will be much easier. Okay. All right. So since we're already here, you can change this as well. All right. So let's see how this looks like. So getting somewhere close to how you want it to be. Much better in it. So you can see that this is centered. You can see the values of these pie charts. So this is the actual value of the cell and this is the benchmark value. You can also change the color of the text itself obviously. So you can come back here. There you go. This is the cell phone color right about here. So you can change it to maybe white. Because in grey, white will look better. And as you can see, the color has changed. And obviously, you can make it big and things like that. So you can see that somewhat is taking shape. Real good, real good. So obviously, there is lots more you can do with scorecards. And you can also use the on-click interactivity. We have not even touched that 
part of the feature which is going to get things really complicated in terms of the implementation obviously because now you'll have a lot of moving pieces so based on one column click you can change things on the other column so you will have to use different data sources for each of those components maybe perhaps two different scorecards and you can you can change the behavior on another scorecard based on the interaction of the first scorecard so we're just working with one scorecard now so then you're going to be having to work with multiple scorecards so all of those scenarios are possible so we are going to be planning an advanced course and we're going to be discussing all that in the advanced course for now let's stop here and i hope you are getting a good idea about lumina designer and especially scorecard in this section and i hope you can take this to the next stage thank you ready to go